The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 134. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of successful women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Subscribe to our newsletter by visiting thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a, a lady, a special lady, all the way from Singapore. She is a health psychologist, a nutrition consultant, and she also has her own company, which is called Healthology. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to YY Lo. YY, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, uh, hi, Sheena. An honor to be able to do this interview with you. Uh, I'm a mother of two children. And I'm currently uh, a health psychologist and practicing together as a life coach as well. I do coaching, I do training, and I specialize in all health-related issues. Some of the areas of specialization I'm doing right now is on the weight management program, stress management, and also on anti-aging therapy. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what's your cultural background? My cultural background is a little bit, I don't know, complicated, I guess. I'm not really, uh, I don't know really Chinese, so everyone always asks me, um, uh, am I Chinese? But my immediate parents, they are both uh, Chinese, but my maternal grandmother was adopted, so, and she doesn't look Chinese, she looks kind of Peranakan, so we don't really know where she, she came from. Maybe, I think, mix Indonesian Chinese with some Malay blood, I guess. <laughs> And uh, my paternal side, my paternal grandfather, although he's a Chinese, he's apparently six feet tall. And that's really tall for a Chinese. So I guess I can still consider myself as Chinese since my pa- both parents are Chinese. And I speak Cantonese. Awesome. Well, thanks for sh- sharing that. And yeah, six, six feet tall for a Chinese, Chinese man is, is pretty tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's above average yes. for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? For me, excellence is a structure. If one person can do it, it is possible for another to learn and do it too. That to me is an uh, important belief to have because this means that anyone can do it if they believe they can because excellence is a structure and another person can learn to be excellent too as long as the person believes that he, he or she can do it and is willing to do it. I love that quote. That's the first time I've heard of it. And it's true, right? If we can see some, like one, just one person doing it, I mean, it's possible, right? Whether it's running a marathon, um, you know, skydiving, <laughs> or just, yes. just, you know, <laughs> having their own business, like anything's possible. And it does have to start with your belief that you can do it. You can go out there and, and get it done. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? For me, the com- I, I really define self-confidence as not being confident in just myself because I think in a way I, I went through a quite pretty difficult journey myself to about the, the, the level of confidence that I have for the things that I do. I think all of us need kind of confidence to be anchored in something greater than ourselves and I learned that most of the time the confidence didn't really come for self but more for from probably begin with external factors like uh, people who have showed confidence in us or it probably starts with people who plant a seed in us or believe in us. And when we go through those positive experiences, it is built upon. And my trust is not in myself. And most, in fact, most of the time, I question my own abilities. Um, and by doing that, I find, I find myself keep on learning new things. And the sense of inadequacy actually keep me on my toes. And the demand of excellence in whatever I'm doing keep me at the forefront of learning and constantly um, re-educating myself, finding new therapy, what is the most effective for my clients. And, and I think it just helped me to constantly learn new things. I believe when we think we start to think that we are expert in our own minds, that's when we stop learning and become overconfident. Yeah, so... For me, my confidence is in this belief that okay, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, so I believe there's a God and He can do everything and He can never fail me. So I think my confidence is anchored in that. And every day I go through life uh, knowing that there's a greater power that's behind me and, and He cannot fail me. 
So I think that's my definition of confidence. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that definition. And yet, you know, sometimes we do need belief in others to, to build our confidence, whether it's someone just who just says, you know, I believe in you, that makes a huge difference, right? When someone can look into yeah. your eyes and just say those words, it can really change a person's life. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what was your life like before the discovery of self-confidence? Okay, like I, um, like I shared, I said that my journey was an easy one because it started from childhood. I experienced many challenges as a child. I think part of that caused me to also probably go into psychology. It's about also trying to understand and make sense of what people go through in life. So as a child, uh, I live in the quite a volatile family environment and uh, my parents quarrel most of the time. And when I was being sent to nursery, probably three years, when I was three years old, a kindergarten teacher actually threatened and, and did it and locked me in a dark room because she said I was crying too much. Uh, during the first few days of school, and I was only three. Until today, I can actually remember the picture in my mind. So uh, I realized the power of visualization and how that is very important. So I was actually highly anxious. I had problems going to school. I had social phobia, and I was shunned from people and hide from strangers. That continued to my primary school, and until my mom actually brought me to see a psychologist, which I greatly resisted. I didn't thought, I, I, I didn't think that the, the, the psychologist actually helped me. But I think as I grew up, I slowly overcome the issue when I see how my grandmother was tired out, just trying to handle my problems, going to school. And I was very, very close to my maternal grandma. Finally, uh, I, I told myself, uh, for her sake, I have to overcome all these negative emotions and uh, eventually it helped that I have good teachers in school to help me to focus on on my academic studies and slowly my confidence build up and I think like what I shared it's important for people to believe in to plant a seed in the first place because I had a lady like she's like a mentor to me she actually shared with me she looked in my, into my eyes one day and she said this she said do you know that you're actually actually a leader and I, I never ever think of myself as a leader before she, she said that to me. So from then on, I think I was only yeah in my primary school and I actually re really remember that until today. Uh, and that sets a difference in my life. And from then on, uh, I continue to, to build on the confidence through doing well in my studies and at the same time, of course, finding Jesus in my life helped me a lot. And by doing that, I, I, I grown to have many good friends in church that helped me through the journey as well. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that story. And, you know, after these discoveries, like other than, than what you, you are doing right now, what, what else, you know, what, what's your life like now? Okay, now actually having overcome those things in my life, I, I can empathize someone who who struggles with uh, emotional issues, with phobias, with, with just you know, the lack of self-confidence or just need help psychologically, mentally or, or socially. So Hiltology is actually birthed out of my passion of helping people. I just love to see how I can make a difference in other people's life. So I actually took a master's and came on top of my cohort for my master's program. I got a distinction. Uh, it was very satisfactory. Uh, it was very, how I call it, rewarding and satisfactory. I feel really encouraged. And from then, uh, I constantly challenge myself to be better. Now that I have two kids and there's a greater need for me to to know to feel that I can I have to constantly grow as a mother communicate with my children uh, and I learn a lot from my kids by communicating with them and sometimes children are so simple but yet they can say things that shock me and cause me to reflect on myself right now as an entrepreneur coach consultant and psychologist I have personal belief that nothing is impossible if if my God says nothing is impossible for him. So before Hiltology, I had another business, which I just sold. It was a spa business. It probably didn't, it didn't do as well as I thought I could, although failure was not an option to me at that point of time. But I realized that failure is, is it may not be a bad thing. It's, it's only a feedback. And from there, we can actually learn more things in our life. 
and keep on moving and encourage us, uh, encourage ourselves to continue to do our best and not be you know overshadowed by by bad experiences so i continue to to push on and and believe that i can do better in in hematology but of course if i am tired out i learned that if i need to rest i should just rest awesome well thanks awesome. for sharing that and you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, you know, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? For me, I one tip, okay, put your, no confidence on yourself and your confidence will not depend on yourself. Um, look outward or constantly look outward for people that you can bless, people that are greater than ourselves. Awesome. Well, that's a lovely tip. Thanks for sharing that. And YY, if our listeners wanted to connect with you and learn you know more about what you do. Is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Definitely. Uh, my personal Facebook is y dot y dot no. Don't ask me why there's a dot <laughs> because I, I don't know. Somehow when I created an account, they didn't let me put y y no. I think someone else had a name. Or you can go to my Facebook pages, which is Healtology H E A L T O L O G Y or Healing Psychology. I've got two Facebook page or Instagram. Just find me in Instagram too at Healtology. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with YY, you can also head on over to the com and search for YY's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank YY for taking the time to share her story with us. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. It's <laughs> great having you on. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Check out our resources to help you jumpstart your inner journey to self-confidence by visiting thetaoofselfconfidence.com.